Okay, so I was uh, I was working on this background here for my game, and someone asked me how I paint my rocks and stuff. I thought maybe I should just record it, show them, and then I thought maybe I should just record it and show everybody. So I don't have any special technique or anything. This one here, this picture here, is actually an aerial photograph of some mountains. I don't actually remember where they're from, but usually when I paint backgrounds, when I paint rocks, dirt, stuff like that, I'd like to open this picture. I don't know why, but I just find it inspirational. Uh, I like to sample colors from it. It's just a really cool picture. I think it's good to have a couple pictures like this. This here is actually a screenshot I just took from Warcraft, World of Warcraft. Of some cool looking rocks inside the uh, inside the garrison area in Draenor, and uh, I just thought it was it's very similar to what I'm going to be trying to paint, and I think uh, whoever painted this did some great jobs. You can see here the angles of the rocks are very clear, light, dark, dark, lots of dark here. I think it's just good to have it, not so much to copy, but to look at and to understand. So I thought I'd have that open. I won't be sampling from it or anything, but I will be just looking at it and seeing how they painted angles, these little chips like that, like that. Again, it's, I think it's good to imitate others, uh, but I don't think it's good to just blindly copy. I think it's good to look at, see what they did, and learn from it. So this up here is actually some tiles from the game I'm working on. Uh, I'll be trying to capture the same sort of feel as these tiles. I made these tiles, but I need to use the same colors, I need to make the same kind of background, everything match for this uh, background painting I'll be doing here. You'll, uh, you'll have to bear with me a little bit. I'm not really used to recording my voice or my screen. Uh, my microphone, I think, that I'm using is from the early 90s. It's not the same color now as it was when I got it originally, so it's pretty old. I'm going to go ahead and start over on this. I'm going to keep it in the background though so I don't lose it, but I think if I'm going to do a tutorial I should start from scratch. One thing I like to do, especially when I'm trying to, uh, like if, when you're working with other artists or you're working under an art director or something, sometimes you have color codes you know, that you have to stick to. Uh, the quick way I like to do this, I don't know if it's the best way, it probably isn't. I'm sure that I'm sure it's bad if you uh if your screen settings and stuff are different, but I do it all the time. Is I will take uh I'm imitating the color up here in this right here. So I'll just take and I'll copy a section of it. I'll try to make sure that I catch all the colors that I'm gonna need. You know, I need this ground color, I need these rock colors, right? So I'm gonna select there. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to make a new image. Doesn't matter the size. New image. I'm going to paste that in there. Then I'm simply going to go to uh, Mode and hit Indexed Colors. It's going to ask if I want to flatten the layers. I'm going to say yes. Then I'm going to say, uh, I usually do perceptual. I don't know what's best. Maybe selective is best. I'm not really sure. I usually put it around 20 or 30 colors. Right here, it's asking, uh, this is information about the indexed color. It's index color, palette colors, forced. I'm, you know, I try different things every time. Right now I've got it on local, selective, colors 30, forced, none. I hit OK, right? And then uh, what that does is that just reduces the colors that's in this image I'm looking at. You can't really tell because I didn't use that many colors to start with when I made the tiles. But um, it gives you an, a color palette. If you go back to image, go to mode, and then go to color table, the actual colors will all pop up. These are all the colors that are used to make this image here. These are the colors. This is the image. So what I like to do is uh, just hit a print screen, then I cancel out. This here you don't even need anymore. I go to new, make a new one. I paste my screen into it. I know it's a lot of steps, but you get so used to it. And then I use... Um, what is this tool called? Crop tool, and I just crop down on my uh, printed screen to those colors, right? And it gives me a little like, kind of like a palette, a temporary palette. I, you know, Adobe uh, has all these really nice palette tools and stuff. Honestly, I have no formal training. I don't know what I'm doing, so I use a lot of screenshots and stuff to to get things done. We don't need this anymore. It was just to get colors from. So no, don't save that. 
So now I have a color palette that generally has these colors in it. This is the palette here. These are the colors. You can see most of them are blacks mixed up, dark colors. I won't be using those. The main thing are, uh, are these blue colors that are probably the ground. Let me change to a color that will show up here. These are my ground colors here. These here are my rock colors. And I usually uh, just sample right out of that. It makes it easier than trying to grab the individual pixel that I need here to work from. Okay, so in the game, the battlefield's going to kind of look like this. There's a uh, menu information down here, so I don't really need to worry about the art there too much. Then there's kind of area here where enemies need to stand. We got bad guys are going to stand here, right? These guys are real bad looking. Everything else back here is just art. It just sets the scene. Now, um, I worked on my tile set, so I know what's in it. So I want to kind of include things that are in it. So it's mostly just rocks. Give me some rocks here, some rocks here, rocks here. This is a cave floor. And then I, I would like to put a doorway because there's a lot of doorways. So there's going to be like a doorway right here. You can see originally I sort of had that going already. We've got a lot of brushes that I've made. Some of them I've found on the internet. Most of them I've made over the years. Honestly, I mostly just use a nice hard round brush like this here. I don't know if that shows up very well, but there's nothing special about it at all. It's just pressure sensitive. It's round. That's usually what I use for most stuff. Sometimes I like to use a flat brush. Oh, let me find one here like this. This brush here. I like to use this sometimes for landscapes. Uh, you can really put down color quick. I'll show you here. Putting in some background here. Da -da 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 -da. And put down some, uh, some, some ground here. My Cintiq is really getting wore out, so you can act probably actually hear me drawing on it. It's all chipped and pitted and I can't I can't afford to send it off. Not so much the financial reason, but just because I can't afford to not have it for that long, because I know it takes months for him to fix it. So with a flat one you can kind of go side to side like this and it sort of adds a, a ground look. But again usually I just end up going right back to my round brush. It's not a custom made brush even, Photoshop comes with it. I love brushes, but man, if you ever want to work on somebody else's machine or you're not at home, you, anytime you're using someone else's machine, you're not going to have your brushes and stuff. So I, f I try to just learn how to use what's there so that I'm never caught you know, needing, needing to rely on something I don't have, I guess. Alright, we know that door is going to be here, cave door. Start putting in some rock shapes. I do a lot of tricks. I don't really know if other artists do it. And I think they're kind of cheap. Like sometimes, if I paint a really good rock, and I'll even I'll even plan to do it, I'll paint a really like what I believe to be a good rock or as good as I can do, and then I'll copy it and kind of alter it and move it around and kind of fill up the screen with it. I tend to just work alone, so I worry about time a lot, and uh, I don't like relying on others, other people. And so uh, I've come up with all these kind of shortcuts, and I'm sure my art suffers a little bit from it, but uh, I think it's more important to just get the work done sometimes. You can always go back and repaint it later if you need to. I try, I try not to, though.
So what I'm doing here is much like I was talking about in this piece right here, is I'm trying to think about light. Light's coming from above, in this cave anyway it is. There's not very much. So I'm painting flat surfaces that are catching that light, almost like a... I mean, I'm, I'm not even getting it like really accurate, I'm just almost like a cartoon or something. I'm just trying to do a shorthand sort of of it. Then I've got sort of a secondary light source coming from the left. It's actually going to be coming from the center. That'll look best in the game. So I'm using just a slightly dimmer color that came off the rocks right here, these purples, kind of pink purple colors. And honestly, the player's eyes aren't going to focus on this. They're going to focus on those guys in the middle. So these just need to set the mood look good enough that they don't notice that they look bad <laughs> and uh, like if you look at a lot of matte paintings in cartoons especially like morning cartoons to kind of mass produced really then a lot of them aren't that good I mean they they know what they're doing though you know they uh, they set the mood quick you know where you're at or you know where the characters are at you know the color it's night it's daytime, it's morning, whatever. And then they reuse them a lot. Matte paintings get reused a lot. People don't know that, but they do in, in lots of cartoons. And uh, they do this to save money is what I've... I have never actually worked on a cartoon, but I have friends that have, and they say that they do it to save money. And that makes sense. They try to reuse areas in the writing and stuff or... Uh, they change areas after it's been written. They're like, well, this could take place on the docks. We already have the dock backgrounds made. We could reuse some of those. And it's really smart. Like, it kind of stinks in a way. But um, when you're trying to make something, man, it's crazy how fast the costs add up. It's hard to know where to cut corners at. mixing the color here a little bit. I love blue for uh, just kind of blending in shadows and stuff. I never, I try not to, I do still sometimes, but I try not to never use black. Always use blue if you can. I don't know, I don't think the eye focuses on blue a lot, so you can sort of uh, hide that you're, there's no detail there. Like in this area here, Right in here, inside that circle, inside this circle, inside this, I guess it's not a circle, inside those shapes, there's not very much detail at all, and most likely I probably won't put any detail in there. It's just kind of a, just kind of a blue shadow, a nebulous shape. The eye is, in my experience, drawn to the highlights, so I think the detail needs to be around those areas. So what I did here is I copied those rocks, and they're not finished. You don't want to copy them necessarily when they're finished, I don't think. It'll be more obvious that you did. I copied them now. Then I'm using, uh, this is in Photoshop, I use Control t to transform. It gives you these nice little handles to change, change shapes and stuff. Move it around, and we'll put it on to the side. Earlier I said that the uh, light source is going to be coming from the center. So I 
flipped it, put it over here, change the shape just to here. I'm going to go ahead and do another one. Happy little rocks. <laughs> I'm just erasing around it with a soft edged eraser. Make it a little less obvious that it's been cut. I merge the layers down. I generally try to work on uh, one layer. Or I work on uh, layers up and then I flatten them pretty frequently. I don't like a lot of layers. I get kind of overwhelmed by them or I get confused if there's more than just at most 10. But I find that I find that I think maybe I personally grew as an artist a little bit when I stopped relying on them. Like I think it's good to do a lot of paintings with no layers at all. Just don't use the layer. And I think you appreciate them more. You rely on them less. Sometimes it's good that if you mess the hand up, just just man, paint over it. Paint a new hand. Don't go back through your layers and try to rescue it. Just paint a new hand. It'll be better. how these rocks are laying. Cave walls are always kind of hard for me, which means I need to paint more of them. It's all about the shape and the light source. In fact, I probably need to do like Ten more tutorials just on this subject just to make myself paint them and learn and I'll just try to convince myself that I'm teaching somebody else something <laughs> just because I need the practice also early in a picture like this this picture is much bigger than what I'm painting it this is the actual size it's pretty big but uh, I'm painting at 50%, that way I can see the whole thing, and then later I'll zoom in to 100%, paint each individual area, add cracks, stuff like that in. And if you can't tell, I'm actually sampling. Most of you guys probably know this, but if you don't, I'm actually sampling while I'm working. So if it looks like I'm just magically have certain colors, I have most of the colors from here already in the picture now. Um, and what I do is I just mouse over and there's a key. Is it Alt? It's Alt. If you press Alt in Photoshop, it'll give you this dropper. Just click, then let off, and you have the color you're over. So like now that I have my darkest shadows in here, which is this doorway, I'll go there whenever I need shadows. Alt, click, and I have it. I don't know if my cursor is showing up or not, but Alt is the uh, is the key you need to use for that. I've been using these hotkeys for so long, and I think a lot of guys who do tor tutorials and stuff they do the same thing. They forget that not everybody knows all these hotkeys, and uh, they forget to tell people what what the heck they you know what the heck they're using. If I do it, I'm sorry. There isn't much to talk about while I'm doing this part, but it is fun to do. This part back here is going to be darker. further away from the center. We know the player's focal point is going to be here, here, because that's where the monsters are at. So we want the light, at least I want the light to come from this, just to be in this kind of area here. Everywhere else it gets darker as it goes out. 
That way the viewer's eyes are constantly dragged towards the light source. Also, uh, I've always heard, and I make it a practice of my own, that uh, the eye is attracted to warmer colors. So I use blues in backgrounds a lot. I use them in uh, shadows. I use them around things I don't want the uh, viewer to focus on. And then if there's stuff that I want them to look at, I'll try to either make it a bright color, like a bright orange color, or a red color, or yellow, some sort of warm autumn -y color. And if I can't make it that color, I'll try to put some sort of highlight on it in that color. Uh, put a torch near it or something like that and then put some cast light from that onto it. And uh, I think that, well, I mean, I don't know if it helps necessarily, but it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm controlling where they're looking at. I'm encouraging them to look at what I want them to look at. shapes of rocks back here that I probably won't do a whole lot of work on. I watch tutorials by some other artists and they're, they're just so good and uh, they have such a great mental shorthand for everything. They just nail it every time. It's really great. I think the only way you can really build that up is to just do it, just paint all the time. You just have to do it over and over until it's easy and you don't realize that it's easy. I feel like I struggle constantly though. So maybe it never gets easy. Yeah, I think it does. There are some things that that I think I can draw pretty well that are pretty easy to easy to draw. It's probably from repetition. It looks like my video file is getting pretty big, primarily because I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm probably going to have to break this up into uh, two parts. But let me quickly show how I do ground, how I'm going to do the ground in this map here. You can see in the original up here, it's kind of got like a slate pieces, sort of. So I'm going to do a couple pieces like that here. Like so. Putting shadows around them to sort of give them a tiled stone look. Zoom in here. Grab a highlight, make it a little brighter. I go around it to show the edge. Put a few little scratches and stuff. Don't want to do too much at this stage. Zoom back out. And I don't think you can, I don't think you should, I don't think you can rely solely on this technique, but I like to do it early. I like to do it early and then sort of paint over it. I'm going to cut that. I had that on its own layer. I forgot to mention those rocks I did there. I'm going to cut it and paste them. Use Control T, resize them a little bit. Copy and paste them, move them around. If you have a layer, like I have a layer with these stones on it, and then I have, uh, I'm using the um, move tool, V for the shortcut for that. If I hold Alt while I move it, it automatically copies it. I use that a lot. Then I'm going to paste the original, which is a little bigger. Flip it, it's a little different size here. Throw that in a few places. Get the original size, throw that right up here in the front. Now 
you can sort of see how that's sort of filled in, flatten everything. And then now I'm going to go in around these. I'm going to paint individual ones. This is kind of time consuming. I find it to be kind of relaxing and meditative and fun. But um, it is time consuming and I don't really know a better way to do it, especially with uh, a background like this that's going to be seen frequently and a lot. Just go in between all of these copy pasted stones and add new stones. Let's zoom out and see how that's starting to look. Yeah, that's how I'm going to handle that. Also, I find it's good to move around a lot. I'll go back and work on these for a little bit and let that let my brain forget about these ground tiles. And then when I come back to them, I'll see stuff that's wrong with them. I'll be like, man, I totally messed that up. I don't know what I was thinking. Go work on these up here. See, I'm already making improvements I missed earlier on those just because I it's kind of new looking. All right, I'm going to stop the video here and uh, see if I can figure out how to edit it together and upload it. Hope you guys learned something. If nothing else, it was kind of fun. It's funny. So, thanks.